Sitting down this morning with Lynn Kirchhoff. She is the author of a brand new book. In fact, this book is just about to be launched. It's called My Shack. And uh, it, it tells the story of, well, an 11-year-old who is abused and violated uh, by somebody that the family trusted. It's, it's an all too common and all too familiar and an all too tragic story that has probably played itself out uh, in our communities for, for decades. Um, she's now contained her thoughts in book form. She's now speaking out publicly about what happened all those very many years ago. Lynn, yeah. uh, th thanks so much for, for, the, for the, the invitation yeah. to, to be part of your launch, and, and thank you very much for the opportunity to sit down. Wh why now? Wh why a book? Why, why even tell the story if, if it happened when you were 11, which yeah. was quite a while ago? It was a while ago, but you, once you go through sexual trauma, the consequences of that loss for a lifetime. And so it's taken years to build up the courage to actually speak about what happened. And you, you ask me why now, why not now? When we, we look at, we listen to the news, you have to just go onto social media. And the crimes against our, our kids, our women, gender-based violence, it's just on the increase. And it makes me really angry to think that it's happened to me so many years ago and it's still continuing. So the why now is to say we need to take a stand. As adults, as mothers and fathers and as a community, we need to take a stand. I want to tell my story because I want to showcase that even though that's happened, we can overcome, but we need each other in order to overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, part of part of what I'm trying to do is not give away too much of the yeah, story because yeah. it's it's told uh, in some cases quite quite brutally and honestly, yeah. but but it's 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 told I think very methodically. Um, so so one one has to follow the story yeah, to correct. understand context. Yeah. But it's it's um it's one of those where people knew that there was the potential. For yeah. something to happen, yet they did nothing yeah. to prevent it but, uh, or to protect you from having had it happen. Yeah, and that's the sad reality today still. I bet you there's, there's always somebody that knows, there's somebody in the family that they're not comfortable with. They Perhaps they can't articulate it, but you know, there's always someone that near or funny Macy's, oh no, Luca is watching them. Um, and it's sad that we don't protect our children and we don't protect our adults. We need to be able to speak out and that's part of taking a stand. We can't keep wanting to hold the peace. And you know, we both people of color. In our society, what happens in your house, it will stay in your mm -hmm. house. But that's where the nonsense happened. We actually need to speak out. The, the family member that had sexually abused me I'd found out years later that he had done it to many others before, which tells me that there were neighbors that knew. Mm -hmm. There were other family members that knew. There were friends that knew. But it happened to me. And I always think of if someone had said something, mm -hmm. what if someone had said something? Perhaps I wouldn't have been. You a wouldn't victim. have been. Sad reality. Yeah. The the book is called My Shack, um, and it's it's it, it serves two purposes really. Uh, the, the incident itself, the abuse, had taken place in a shack it, in a hockey at the I back know. of us, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's it it also is is you almost for many years being confined by what happened in that shack. Yeah. You built a shack, a mental and an emotional shack of your own. Yeah. And so that's why when I thought about the title, I wanted to call it my shack. That's the place that I lost my purity. It's the place that I was completely broken. But it's the very place that I found my strength and my courage to speak out. So the shack is a reminder that no matter what I face, I can emerge and I can overcome. So I, I, I spoke yesterday on Expresso. When you look at the cover, Look at that young girl that went through that shack experience mm. and look at me now. Yeah. I still have, you know, healing to do. There's always trigger moments, but it is possible, as the subtitle suggests, a story of hope. It is possible to work through the horrific experience that I had. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, my shack for a long time held me prisoner. Um, for a long time, I wasn't able to perhaps simple things wear what I wanted to wear. You don't want to draw attention to your makeup or your hair. And so I lived life according to what I thought people expected me to be. And I lived life trying to hide and not say, hey, mm -hmm. I am a survivor, I am an overcomer. And it's all things that you work through. And so my shack isn't just my shack. It's just a wealth of information and a wealth of feeling and emotion that has gone into the title of the book. Yeah. In, in the book, you also, you also talk about the further traumatizing uh, that, that comes with needing to appear in court. Mm. So it's, it's not as if you've, you've sat silent for all these years oh with the story. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You, you, you've gone, in fact, at a, at a young age, yeah. just a, a while after this had happened, uh, the matter ended up in court, and, and, and that was another horrific experience. I, I, I don't think I, I do justice to articulating that in the book, um, to actually to, to take the stand and being questioned so much. And I think what stood out for me was that um, so before you go to court, you obviously the detectives come and you do the whole process. Like on the movies, the detectives come to your house and you have to go to hospital. But what was apparent for me is that the, the district surgeon that I had to see was a male. The detectives, they were men. His, his um, lawyer was a man. My lawyer was a man. The judge was a man. And I had felt as if for a moment you were back into the shack because you didn't really have any power mm. there. You were trying to speak your truth, but your truth was being questioned all the time. So I, um, I, I left there pretty much broken. I left there pretty much thinking that our judicial system doesn't really mm. work. I don't know the changes now. I would hope that there are significant changes, but back then when I was 11 years old. I mean, picture an 11 year old girl. You're young, you're short, you, you know, petite, I was petite and you stand and all these men stand around you asking you all these questions. It was very humiliating. It was, um, and I, I understand why victims do not want to don't go step through forward. that. They don't because they don't, there's no holding. They don't hold you and say, okay, it's going to be okay, Lynn. You know, so no, that's not something that that I can even speak out without wanting to get emotional. The, I mean, the, the shack experience is one thing, but the humiliation thereafter is just, yeah, something else. So, sorry. <laughs> we thought we wouldn't do this, yes. but, uh, no. but that... That court case, yeah. it's hardcore that, man, you know, it's, it's hardcore when you, you speak your truth and they ask you the same questions, Aiden, over and over, the same questions. And the more I kept telling the man, this is what happened, but why didn't you say? Yeah. Why didn't you shout no? And the reality is that when, when something like that happens, your mind cannot conceive the enormity so it's as, as if it's an out-of-body experience. You, you know that it's wrong, but you can't. You, you, you're lame. You've got no voice. And you, you literally you wait till, till it's mm. done. You know? So, um, so yeah. yeah. It is. The, the court case, obviously, is, is one thing. Um, but it's, it's how... So, so that's the judicial system that, that yeah. lets victims down. What, what happens at home... Subsequent to an incident like this, and, and you, you spend a lot of time in the book dealing with that. Mm. That's also a further violation. So, I mean, there was the physical act. Then, then there was the, the humiliation and the disappointment of a, of a court case. But then there were adults who didn't step up and do what adults need to. Mm. And unfortunately, in your case, these are the adults who, who almost should be most wired to mm. want to do that. You are their offspring. They, mm. they created you. They brought you into the world. They reared you, and they did nothing to defend you. Yeah. And 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 that's that's another painful part of the book, right? It's it's a, and that's why I spend some time in detailing that in the book. And it really, it was very painful back then. I'd expected, and I mean, you know, it's my parents, and I'd expected them to do more. I wanted them to do more, um, but they were unable to 
to see that they were unable to separate my need and the shame. Because you must understand, so it was a family member that did it. And we had often spent time with the family. So suddenly, once the sheriff issued the notice or whatever, then it was quiet. Nobody speaks about it. Um, and then it's the court case and everything. And I can tell you to date, no family member has spoken to me about it. Nobody. But I, I arranged a meeting with my parents some years ago um, because I felt that I was ready to say, you know, Dad, you should have. Yeah. I wanted a hero in the story. I wanted you to go and beat him up because in my mind, that would make it better for me. Um, and it was a very, very emotional meeting. They explained to me that they really didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to handle it. Um, and there's some things that are just with, you know, it's just too personal to share. But if I can just explain to you that I went to my parents recently and I said, Mom and Dad, remember the book is coming out. So my mom's been diagnosed with dementia. So she doesn't remember all that well. But I think the last meeting, it probably hit ground. So I said, Dad, I spoke about these things in the book and whatever. And I, it was so emotional because he sat and he cried. Mm. Now, to see your daddy cry isn't yeah. the nicest thing. And he, it wasn't a weepy cry. He just sat and the tears rolled. And then my mom kept apologizing and they kept saying they're really sorry. But the beauty of the meeting for me was I could say, but it's okay now. I understand how you grew up. I understand the shame back then. And I understand that nobody taught you to parent me. And so when, when the abuse happened, they really didn't know what to do. But in my 11-year-old mind, I got really angry. And into my teenage years, I got really angry. I didn't understand mm -hmm. what I understand now as an adult. Um, but it, you know, I, I could tell them how much I love them because I do, I love my parents dearly. And especially now, they just, they're so different. And, and part of, of their difference is that they were able to change. They were able to say, Lynn, I am sorry, at this late age in their life, you know. So, um, yes, my parents weren't there. I speak about them quite harshly. In, in my book because I think it's important for the readers to understand the gravity of not having your parents supporting you when you need it most. But as an adult, I understand. Mm -hmm. And I love them more for, for wanting to love me more. So Something, something that stood out, um, it's, it's, it's not an easy book to read. Um, I, I I needed to read it in stages. Um, it, it's, it's it, because it's it's a personal telling of experiences, and and knowing the person who's t who's telling the book almost takes away a layer of separation. I suppose that that would be the other thing. But but the thing that struck me, and and just in speaking to either female friends or female colleagues, um, is that the threat of sexual violation or sexual harassment is is just so prevalent because in the book you outlined two that I can think of right now other instances where other people you know one one was your own age as you moved on into early adulthood but, but there was another uncle you know who also tried something who, who could potentially even have known what had happened when you were yeah, younger yeah and, and despite all of that still tried yes. you know and and still shoved some money into your yeah. hand so that you could shut up I mean that's that sadly is is the story of, of young girls growing up and, and moving into maturity. Yeah. It, it happens, or the potential is for it to happen over and over. Yeah, but in, in that specific case, I want to say that if that did happen, all of it, in fact, he tried with, <laughs> with, with, with my sisters as well. Yeah. But you know, they're good timekeepers, men, Aiden. Sexual predators, they know when to strike. And so, so how, so you know, I grew up and there was quite a bit of alcohol in the house. And so when the party starts and so forth, that's when that mm -hmm. uncle would do those things. And so we must always be aware that, that, that sexual predators are good timekeepers. They know exactly when to do. <laughs> and they're not strangers to, they, generally. No, they, they are they're not. people who are part of your inner circle. They are. And that's the scary thing though, because you look at people differently after reading my book. And I want, I want that to happen. I want people to actually become more aware of who they spend their time with. 
and if there's there's uncles that is particularly interested in the girls why ask mm. yourself why and i know that it sounds harsh to say mm. that but that is the reality it's not always the strangers on the street it really isn't it it's it really isn't sometimes when people speak about rape sexual abuse they paint this picture of a guy on the street that looks really dodgy and so forth it's not like that that's a percentage mm. of it it's our very own circle the the book also as as much as it's about that incident and the mm. fallout and your your turbulent teenage years mm. as a result Ooh, of yeah, nah. trying to process <laughs> trying to process the yeah. the emotion be, behind what had happened to you it it um the latter part of the storytelling Steve. takes a, a decidedly mm. positive turn yeah. you know you 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 always had, had been somebody of faith you your faith then ultimately became the thing that yeah. that uh, resulted in you pursuing yeah. studies you became a pastor yeah. um it's a it's it's and and once again without giving away the story yeah. there's there's an element of, of triumph and fulfillment mm. and finding a, a good partner and children coming out of that yeah. marriage and and without taking away from anything it it also is a matter then saying well it's it's for you almost to choose life mm. despite despite an horrific incident you know it 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 can either destroy yeah. any any opportunity you ever have at happiness or you can say well actually i deserve happiness despite yeah. that and i will go and find it and i will enjoy it and i will surround myself yeah. with it all the time and that's exactly what i speak about in the book after graduation i met uh, lloyd um and i thought oh my gosh this is boyfriend. this is for real you know and um, i he's going to kill me for saying this but i think it it almost puts context and i second date he said you know he's not looking for girlfriends he's looking for a wife and i was like this does this man know me he doesn't even know my past um and then we started dating and i was like oh my gosh i think this is for real mm-hmm. this is like this is adult sort of yeah. stuff And so we I think from that night we saw each other every other day but you know we just you know you speak about soulmates and you speak about all that but we really are we just so in sync with each other mm. we married for 20 years we'll be 21 years in January um but you know when when you think something and your husband or your wife think the same thing it's that sort mm. of thing and it's just absolutely beautiful it's he is possibly the one of the, one of the best things that's happened to me mm-hmm. other than her and her work mm-hmm. um and so yes so masha speaks about the horrific experience but then it speaks about how after i decided mm. to change and that's what i want to speak about is this did happen but i had the choice to change it i had to this de- i had to decide okay i want something mm. else i want better i don't want to just exist i want to live and so we need to be kind to ourselves and we need to forgive ourselves there's always going to be trauma aiden yeah. all of us experience trauma might not be this way but there's always trauma but it, it is up to us and we have it within ourselves to change we have the inner strength sometimes you have to dig really deep mm. to get there but i think it's possible with all of us really. yeah All right, who must read this book and why? Why 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 do people need to go out? Everybody needs to read. Yes. But specifically, I think that if you were a victim of sexual abuse, it would be a good um so self-help guide. I think it's a good book for moms and dads that feel that they didn't do a good job mm-hmm. because there is forgiveness. I there's a part in there that I speak to the perpetrators so that they know how we feel. Sometimes sometimes they come out of such broken homes that this is the only thing that they think is normal mm. and so i speak to that as well i speak to the judicial system because they need to change it if it hasn't changed um i speak to men like lloyd that chose a woman that's been sexually violated some men won't do What? that because yeah. that's another journey that's going to be in part 2 um but i think that If you find yourself in a place of not wanting to live then this book could be for you. It is a story of hope. It speaks of immense courage and immense bravery 
And it's not because I'm special. We all have it. It's because we can decide for ourselves what we want. So, awesome. It's it's a it's a gut wrenching read. Uh, somebody who's, who's was given an advanced copy of the book to uh, to read through. Not not easy material, but it's it's necessary reading. Mm. It's called My Shack, um, a story of hope. And that's the author, Lynn Kirchhoff. Where can people get the book? It's, I mean, it's self-published. Yeah, I mean, this, this I whole know. project is yours. Where, where, where can amazing. they find it? They can just go to my website and yep. they can order via the website. All right. MyShack.co.za. That was the conversation then with the uh, author. No, well, an author these days, uh, Lynn Kirchhoff. Uh, she tells her story in, uh, in a book called My Shack. Details to be found at MyShack.co.za.